have a confession to make. I've spent more time on an airplane in an airport the past four years of my life than I have on this college campus or in a college classroom. Whether riding pickup trucks through Jordanian deserts, understanding Chilean culture amongst a Valparaiso sunset, or listening to an accordion player amongst the cobbled stone streets of Mexico City, my newfound love for travel has allowed me to understand my own insignificance. Like a small fish in an abyss of water, I have come to understand that although my actions can be menial in such a large world, my actions also host the power to be both profound and impactful. And so with this understanding, four years ago, I made a promise to myself as I ventured off to college. Four new years of school, four new travels, four new reasons to better understand the world that we live in today. Instinctively, traveling became an inescapable temptation, like a sudden love that allows you to lose yourself quickly without reasoning or explanation. Young and naive, I soon began to travel the world in hopes of understanding people's values, cultures, and languages that I was told would be much different than my own, but that I soon began to realize were reminiscent of the person I was and of the person I hoped to become. In doing so, these stories allowed me to understand one single truth while at DePaul University. If a person's life could be described through their palms, their lives would be filled with withers and tears. If every exhausted wrinkle in our faces described a story lapse, then our lives would be worth writing narratives till the end of time. Yet, as he sits gazing at a glimpse of Middle Eastern midnight stars, or as she sits in Buenos Aires, Argentina, in Plaza de Mayo waiting to reunite with her long lost children, I have come to a realization. In a world of seven billion and growing, very few of us will ever have the opportunity to understand each other's stories. And if you don't believe me, just look at your neighbor and, under and ask yourself, what's their story? Complex, empowering, and oftentimes untold, I'm here today to tell you a little bit more about my story. My story is one that begins in Mexico City. I remember every summer I would go home to visit my family and my grandpa, and words could not possibly describe the amount of joy that I felt around this time of year. Vivid sun, laughter, an iridescent array of trees bearing low-hanging fruit, and pungent pomegranate juice swishing in my mouth, these were all memories that left with me every summer as I returned home to Chicago. Yet, as I matured, reality became an invisible likeliness as images of poverty, the struggle to survive, and the people all became more real. Images of shack housing, children begging for food, and men and women working long hours for meager pay, those were all memories that traveled back with me as I returned home to Chicago and they were more important than any souvenir than I could carry in my suitcase. Yet, as I returned home to Chicago, I was also reminded of a new reality. As I turned on the nightly news, I was constantly reminded that the world was filled with intolerance and violence. As I turned on the nightly news, I was reminded that we were not welcome here. And as I turned on the nightly news, I was constantly reminded that the world was filled with words of bigotry, that oftentimes politicians and others spoke so easily, that, but that weren't so easy to erase from my mind and to erase stereotypes or misperceptions. It was then that my travel and my oath to travel became much more than an oath to just see the world or to find myself. It became an oath to better understand the voices in our world that were oftentimes left unheard. And in doing so, every single time I boarded onto a plane, I realized that a series of lessons would await me. And I can promise you lessons, there were many of those. For in cities I'd never lived, I learned the importance of generosity. When I traveled to Jordan, I found myself sharing three cups of tea with Bedouins in deserts. And although they had much less than I did, whatever that meant, they gave me the bare necessitations off their backs. For in cities I had never lived, I learned the importance of gaining direction, or what I like to call the art of getting lost. As I navigated my way in new cities with uh, tuk-tuks and water taxis and very, very patient locals. For in cities I would never lived, I learned the importance of talking to strangers. 
Sure, we didn't always speak a common language, but we found a way to communicate, either by dancing or by practicing sign language or by making noises. And I can promise you today that those have been the best conversations I've had to date. For in cities we'd never lived, I had never lived, I learned the importance of taking risks. And sure, some were more calculated than others, I am sorry mom and dad, but in all of my faults and in all of my failures, I learned the importance of finding confidence in the unknown. Moreover, in cities I had never lived, I learned the importance of gaining intellectual curiosity. Because I was walking in the same cities that some of the most important philosophers, leaders, and inventors of our time had been walking in the past. Yet, as I returned back to Chicago, I also began to realize that my privileges of traveling was something that very few Americans throughout the world experience. Less than 1% of college students, Americans, here in the US have the opportunity to study abroad. And although some may study abroad, they'll travel to places like London, Paris, and Rome. And although those are great cities, don't get me wrong, those aren't the cities that lack the most cultural awareness. We should be encouraging our students to travel to places that oftentimes host threats of stereotypes and bigotry. So traveling back to Chicago one summer from London, and I was able to meet with my sister, and she was traveling back from Greece. And she had mentioned that she came across this quote that said, nothing is too heavy for those that have wings. Alice Graven Latin. In Latin, that means nothing is too heavy for those that have wings. Mm -hmm. And it was at that point that we decided to go back to the drawing board and ask ourselves a question. How can we create more opportunities for students to study abroad that currently do not have the finances to do so? That summer, we created, uh, co-founded an organization called NetWings. Uh, NetWings is currently a nonprofit organization that provides international exposure opportunities for youth to travel the world. From Argentina to Germany to a trip that we're currently planning in Uganda, we're giving students the opportunity to travel abroad while receiving fully funding opportunities and also having the opportunity to engage and interact with students at international conferences throughout the world. So many of you might be asking, why travel? For a lot of travelers, their responses might be different, from finding a way to better know yourself, from gaining new perspectives, or having an adventure of a lifetime. These are all true, but my reasoning for traveling is a bit more, it's a bit different. My motivation comes from my family. You see, I come from a family of travelers. My dad met my mom 26 years ago in Mexico, and it was then that they decided to fall in love, to write each other love letters, and as they ventured back to Chicago, my dad then made the promise to teach his daughter the importance of understanding different cultures. And could you blame him? My mom was a serious catch and still is today. <laughs> but after that, after that promise, my sister also made a promise to myself to teach me the importance of human dignity and treating people with respect regardless of where they were from. And I think when you ask me the question, what must be done, I've now come to understand that we have, it's imperative that we teach students the importance of going abroad. You see, we now live in a society where ideas can cross oceans. We're experiencing challenges unlike any other before. And in those challenges, we see climate change, we see political unrest. And although we might not think that these are our challenges, as we move forward, these challenges will be shared challenges. We should be encouraging our students to go forth and to learn about the world, to take on those global challenges. And so today, as I speak to you, I want to give a call to action to policymakers. I encourage you to interact with the world both meaningfully and intentionally. To educators, I hope that you'll understand that the world is every book that you'll ever need to use in your classroom. And to students, I hope that today you'll take an oath with me in understanding that you too should travel the world. I, Jacqueline, want to see the world, follow its map to its edges, and keep going, forego the plans, trust my instincts, let curiosity be my guide. I want to change hemispheres, sleep with unfamiliar stars, and let the journey unfold before me in cities I have never lived. Thank you.